So in the previous video, we have already discussed about rectal ulcers. If you haven't watched that video, go to the main channel and watch that video again so the whole topic can be understood properly. In this video, we are going to talk about ulcerative colitis, which is uh, classified under inflammatory bowel disease or inflammatory bowel sim syndrome. So what happens in ulcerative colitis is we can, uh, the graphical representation can be seen over here. This is a normal colon from the inside okay so previously when we were discussing about rectal ulcers we were focused on this region of our body but if the ulcers are observed in the upward direction uh, from the rectum into the colon or the large intestine uh, it can be due to various reasons so we will be discussing that this is an image of a normal rectum whereas this is an image where we can see some lacerations and ulcers that have been formed along with this redness being observed due to the inflammation of colon okay so ulcerative colitis is an inflammatory bowel disease that causes inflammation and ulcer sores in the digestive tract okay ulcerative colitis affects the innermost lining of your large intestine that is known as colon and as well as in the rectum okay so again ulcers and sores as well as inflammation and swelling can be observed but in the region of colon that is above the talking about the symptoms of ulcerative colitis uh, i have to bring up this point that some patients may feel very mild symptoms or they might even not feel all these symptoms and some of them might feel most of the symptoms along with some uh, in, in an aggressive form okay so the symptoms can vary on person to person depending upon the condition so let's discuss what can be the symptoms the number one symptom is malnourishment okay uh, later on we will also see that uh, weight loss is one of the symptoms which is actually connected with malnourishment and why is this malnourishment yes we will discuss it soon the second major symptom of ulcerative colitis or any type of IBS IBDs is diarrhea a constant chronic problem of diarrhea uh, accompanied with blood or pus discharge along with the stool uh, next is continuous abdominal pain and cramping so we will keep on feeling the patient will keep on feeling cramps throughout the day and might have to go to the loo multiple times a day because he is suffering from diarrhea as well as abdominal pain and cramping Pain can also be directly felt in the rectal region, rectal bleeding, okay, that is uh, some sort of some amount of blood being passed along with stools. Why? Because these ulcers in an aggravated form can also cause active bleed. So these will be bleeds with, uh, these will be ulcers with active bleeds. So some amount of blood can also be observed. Uh, urgency to defecate this is one of a major indicator when it comes to differentiating between rectal ulcers as well and uh, ulcerative colitis so in rectal ulcer symptoms we didn't have any sort of urgency to defecate we also didn't feel much of cramping so cramping and urgency to defecate uh, these are two symptoms which actually differentiate ulcerative colitis from rectal ulcers uh, the next is inability to defecate despite the urgency. So what is going to happen with a patient that is suffering from IBS? He is going to feel constant cramps. He might have to use loo multiple times in a day ranging from 3 to 6 or even more. Uh, he will always have an urgency, sudden urgency to defecate. And there is no way that the person is able to hold it that it is very urgent. He needs to use the loo ASAP. That doesn't mean... It doesn't matter if he is in his house or in his workplace or in his study place, uh, wherever this urgency is sometimes very painful also, okay. Despite the urgency, when the person will finally reach the loo, he won't be satisfied or the amount of defecation that he does, the amount of stool that his body passes will be very little in volume, okay. The urgency will be very high, but the defecation will be very low. So this is also an another giveaway of an inflammatory bowel disease. Weight loss as we have already associated with malnourishment. Fatigue. Fatigue is also associated with malnourishment. 
fever fever is because uh, unwanted bacteria is coming in contact with open wounds and sores and from there it can go into the bloodstream the gut bacteria can go into the bloodstream the gut bacteria is only wanted in our gut okay the body does not want uh, such contamination when it comes to blood okay yes the body needs good health the gut bacteria but it needs it only in the gut region not in the blood floating around so if the gut bacteria penetrates or through the open wounds and so it comes in contact with blood supply it can also cause septicemia that is infection in blood which can raise body temperature that is fever in children if suffering from ibs there will be a failure to growth due to malnourishment factors so what are the other complications that are associated with the ulcerative colitis see number one is severe bleeding from colon or from uh, rectum or during passing the stools a hole in the colon that is perforated colon a very aggressive state if the problem is not treated in the initial phases severe dehydration why because the person is suffering from diarrhea constant diarrhea bone loss due to malnourishment factors the inflammation of skin joints and eyes we've talked about septicemia just right now this inflammation can spread and also affect your joints and eyes and skin okay uh, so there will be bacteria floating around in your blood okay the unwanted bacteria they can cause uh, repeat infections or continuous chronic infection in our body an increased risk of colon cancer yes because due to high inflammatory a response of the body there is a chance of some polyps tumors or cancers being developing a rapid swelling in colon that's it, uh, that's also known as toxic megacolon increased risk of blood clots in veins and arteries again causing by uh, septicemia as well as other complications of ulcerative colitis and another type of uh, inflammatory bowel disease that is known as the crohn's disease okay this is also a type of ibd uh, the symptoms are pretty much similar which can lead to uh, abdominal pain severe diarrhea fatigue weight loss malnourishment bone loss osteoporosis all these things inflammatory uh, sorry inflammation caused by crohn's disease can involve different parts of digestive tract okay this is something different so let's elaborate it a little so in the cases of inflammatory bowel disease okay first of all let's see the morphological the physiological changes that are being happening in the colon or the large intestine so when we are talking about a healthy colon this is a healthy colon but when we talk about ulcerative colitis we see lacerations and ulcers and open sores in the innermost side of the colon okay in the innermost side of the large intestine but we do not see any external change see the external uh physiology look of this and this is almost same but when we talk about crohn's disease we are going to see not only ulcers and wounds in the inside but there is also a hypertrophic thickening of colon muscles this hypertrophic thickening of colon muscles see we can differentiate it from this okay this doesn't look like uh, this has totally changed over here okay now what is the problem when uh, the muscles of intestine will be that thick uh, see the peristaltic movement of muscles which are going to push the food that we ate forward is harder to do when the muscle layer is thickened okay so this is going to cause extra problems so muscle hypertrophy will cause extra problems and it is only observed in crohn's disease the another significant difference of ibs ulcerative colitis with crohn's disease is that this is a case of ulcerative colitis okay and this is the region uh, where it can happen from uh, the rectum region up towards the colon region but in the cases of crohn's disease it can happen in different parts of our gi tract and also can sometimes be noticed in small intestine okay so in rectal ulcers or ulcerative colitis we do not see any ulcers in the small intestine it is only related with colon but in crohn's disease in some cases ulcers can also be noticed in the small intestine area uh before discussing about hidden causes i want to elaborate one small topic that we have left behind uh, 
uh, we were talking about diarrhea, the constant diarrhea, the chronic diarrhea. What is the reason of chronic diarrhea? Uh, see, this is our uh, digestive tract. If we focus over here, the food that we eat will be passed through the large intestine and will be excreted from our body. This food will be a mixture of uh, undigested food and toxins and byproducts and waste products. Okay, if in case this and uh, this toxic and waste product will pass through this intestine at a normal rate it will have a higher chance to come in contact with this open sores which are going to cause repeat blood infections to and also if the movement of food from the large intestine will be at normal speed a lot of moisture and water content will be sucked out of the food and uh, of the food and it can cause hardening of stools so just imagine this is a normal colon and if a medium to hard consistency of stool may pass from this it may or may not damage the inner lining of the colon but if a hard consistency of food passes through if a hard consistency of uh, waste products pass through this area it is definitely going to uh, have a negative impact on the already formed ulcers to avoid this what our body does it fast it hyper regulates the excretion speed of our body so normally a food is excreted from our body uh, from approx 24 to 30 hours time the food that we ate will stay in our body and will be excreted after 24 to 30 hours but body does not want a hard stool so that it may damage it may not damage the already formed so, so the body will reduce its time of food passing through the whole GI tract in up to four to six hours but four to six hours are not enough for our GI system to absorb all the nutrients thus causing malnutrition weight loss fatigue as well as some other issues like bone loss osteoporosis okay so this is the reason why our body is losing constant uh, continuously losing weight we are constant, uh, uh, constantly losing muscle mass and we are also having a severe negative impact on our mental health as well as memory when we are suffering from ulcerative colitis okay so we have now come to the topic that what are the hidden causes of ibds uh, what are the problems why do these ibds are so popular so uh, ibds are so common nowadays so the reason is number one food allergies second is the inflammatory factors the inflammatory type of diet that we are having we are not having enough fresh vegetables and fruits and natural products instead we are having uh, processed foods which are uh, highly inflammable and uh, can trigger inflammatory response of our body leading on to inflammation in our colon or GI tract some other causes can be autoimmune diseases Crohn's disease can also be a factor due to genetics okay so these are the common factors when we talk about food allergy I want to discuss some common foods that have been known allergens for majority of the people okay so these eight are the major allergens found throughout the world okay so number one is milk milk and dairy products okay uh, a few years ago we might not have heard any cases of not met a person who is having lactose intolerance so suddenly from the last 10 years we are having cases like lactose intolerance in uh, young as well as adults uh, a couple of years ago even gluten allergy or wheat allergy celiac disease was also a very common occurrence but nowadays it is a very common occurrence almost everybody has met one or more than one people who are suffering from wheat allergy okay so these two are uh, very basic allergens okay sometimes uh, so many years of a person's life uh, we keep on consuming these foods and then suddenly we start developing some sort of allergic reaction to the foods okay so we have to assess that also uh, the other is tree nuts so tree nuts include all types of nuts like ground nuts and uh, walnuts almonds pecans macadamia nuts all sort of nuts egg allergy is also coming as a new form of very common allergies that is being found so people whenever they consume egg or egg products they feel discomfort in their gi tracts 
peanut allergy very common in developing uh, European and Western nations, but in India it is not that prominent. Fish allergy not that prominent in India, but in uh, foreign nations in European and uh, East uh, sorry Western nations it is a pretty common allergy along with shellfish and soya bean. So if I talk about mainly in India, this is the most common form of allergens that we found. Okay. And second, now we are also seeing cases of milk allergy. Rest of them are not as common uh, as the others as compared to the Western nations.